Good morning. If you haven't listened to the last two weeks devotionals, I suggest you do that before you listen to this one. It will just make a lot more sense if you do. Uh, we've been talking about uh, some things we need to do in our life that we learned from the story of King Asa in 2 Chronicles 14. We talked about getting rid of idols in our life, an idol being anything that we put before God. Uh, we talked about seeking God, obeying his word, and cleaning out our closet, getting rid of those secret sins. Today we will continue with the fifth step that we learned from King Asa. Number five, we need to build fences. What are fences for? Well, they set a boundary line around a, a person's property. We need to set up some boundaries in our life. I looked up the word boundary in the dictionary. The definition is something that indicates bounds or limits. Essentially, then, we need to have limits, boundaries in our life. How far is too far to go? For example, I'm a married woman, and the Bible tells me that I am not to commit adultery. So I have set up some boundaries or limits to help me not do that. One of those boundaries is that I've set a standard for myself. And pastor's been talking about this on Wednesday nights, and it's been some really good lessons. But I've set a standard for myself that I do not ride alone in a car with any man except my husband. Now, obviously, the exception of that would be my dad or my brother or some family member. But that is one boundary that will help me in that area of not committing adultery. And there are many other such areas in our life where we need to set up boundaries. Uh, we need to have some limits that will keep us from doing things that we should not do according to God's word. All right, number six, God will give us rest. There are times in our life when everything is really just going great. Financially, emotionally, spiritually, you name it, you are doing fabulous. God has given you rest. So do we stop doing what we know we should do during those times of rest? Absolutely not. It's time to get busy. Do you remember King Asa during times of rest? What did he do? He took time to build some walls, and that's what we need to do next. Number seven, we need to build walls, towers, gates, and bars. Well, what are those for? Well, walls are for our protection. Put some walls up in your life that will protect you from the enemy's attack. What are some walls of protection? Well, those could be Bible reading, prayer, Bible study, regular faithful church attendance, good godly music, and, and other things as well. But then when the devil comes to, to you and tells you that, you know, say, God doesn't care for you, he says, what defense do you have against that? Are there verses you know that you can fight back with? What if Satan tries to tempt you with your besetting sin? What walls have you built up in your life to protect you? Now, this may sound silly, but I'm going to tell you about a wall I have in my life. I never walk down the liquor aisle at the grocery store, and I do not go into bars. Even if I know they have great food in there and I'm just going to get some food, I will not do it. Why? Well, that is a wall that I've put up in my life. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 20, verse 1, that wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Now, I do not want to be deceived. I do not want to be foolish. And so I've put up a wall in my life to protect me from the life of an alcoholic. That would be a wall. And there's, you know, that's just a simple example. There's so many areas in our life where we need some walls up to protect us. Then I could go on and on about those walls, but I, I hope you understand the point of the fences and the walls, setting limits and boundaries and just trying to protect yourself from Satan's attacks. Now, after King Asa built walls, it says that Judah prospered. So you've read God's word, you've been consistent in your prayer life, you seek the Holy Ghost's guidance and his filling and you're attending church. So God begins to bless you. Do we stop doing those things then since God has been blessing us? No. Number eight, we get prepared for battle. Remember King Asa? He prepared even when God had prospered the people of Judah. You mark it down, Christian, when you are experiencing blessings in your life because of obedience to God and his will, you will be the target of our enemy, the devil. But do we wait until the enemy comes to start preparing? 
No, we should do that now, today. Ephesians 6.11 tells us to put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then in verses 14 through 18, it tells us what the armor of God is. It is truth, righteousness, the gospel, faith, salvation, the word of God, and prayer. These are the weapons we need to get prepared for the battle against Satan. Now, when we have done our part in cleaning up our life, living right, doing right, building walls and fences, then when Satan does attack, we can cry out to God in prayer and he will hear us and answer us. The problem is, and we all know it's true, we just want to skip all that beginning stuff and just expect God to answer our prayers. We want to live how we want to live. And then when we're having trouble, say, God, help us. Okay, but let's learn this lesson from King Asa that he taught to us in 2 Chronicles 14. And let's get rid of those idols in our life. Let's seek the Lord, obey God's word, get rid of secret sins, build fences and walls, and get prepared for battle. If we do these things, like King Asa, then we can cry out to God in confidence that God will hear us saying these words from that Lord, from that verse, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. It starts with the individual. That's me. That's you. Then our churches, America's churches, are filled with idols, filled with Christians, who never even read God's word, let alone obey it, or seek him and try to do what's right. They put so many things in their life before God. We're all guilty of it. They have no boundaries or walls up for limits or to protect them from Satan. They're not prepared to fight the enemy because uh, they have they don't even know God's word because they're not reading it. And so and that's how we fight the devil is with God's word. And if you don't know it, you have no protection. And we wonder why our country is falling apart. It's because of us individual Christians. If individual Christians get right with God, then our churches will get right. And if the churches of America get right, then right behind that will follow our country. If our country gets right, then God will hear our prayer, answer us, and bring peace and healing. We all know Second Chronicles seven fourteen. It starts out, "If my people, which are called by my name." We all know that verse. But listen to those first words: "If my people." That's us. We are God's people. You know the rest. It's up to us. We have to humble ourselves and pray and seek His face. Then it says He will hear us. Oh, and I almost forgot. What did happen when Asa cried out to God? Well. Let's read. It says in 2 Chronicles 14, verses 12 through 14. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerar, and the Ethiopians were overthrown that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host, and they carried away very much spoil. And they smote all the cities round about Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them. So what happened? God defeated the enemy. The enemy. They won the battle with God's help, and they carried away lots of spoil. Do you need God to defeat some enemies in your life right now? Are you facing some battles that are just too big for you? Do you need God's blessings in your life? Well, then learn from King Asa's example. Do the things he did, and then you too, just like he did, can say with confidence, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help. O oh Lord, my God, I rest in you. O oh Lord, you are my God, and he will help.